What's up, Pandus? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I've made no secret that I like Hollow Sun. I've bought myself uh, many of them over the past year or so uh, and just finally picked up this one. This is the HS. 510C. In fact, I was so excited about this uh, particular optic, I bought myself two of them. And this is how it comes. I actually uh, opened this one up already. This, this uh, plastic box, you know, it's kind of like a bake light type of box, comes in the sleeve, and it's actually a little hard to get out. But the thing I love about Hollow Sun is the unbelievable value. So there used to be this saying that. You know, you should put an optic on your rifle uh, that's the same price as the rifle. You know, that they should be somehow be correlated like that. And I think that's kind of silly. The optic on your rifle should be as good as the capability of the rifle, right? Price is kind of irrelevant. It's just the capability. You know, if you have a uh, one MOA rifle, you should have an optic that allows you to maximize that. Um, there's no reason to have an optic that significantly... Uh, better than the capability of the rifle or have a rifle that has a significantly better capability than the the optic right so price be damned but hollow sun is disrupting everything <clears throat> and in fact i have absolutely loved my other hollow suns here because i get a super high quality optic i've always gotten them with the the circle and the dot which this is and the reason I've done that is just, I just really have liked that experience very much EOTech. You know, not only does a circle bring in your eye, draw it into the target, but then the, the dot, you can really hone in and, you know, do really precision placement. Now, I want to just unbox this for you here because this one is an open reflex sight style optic and I've never owned one. I've always wanted one, but never owned one. I really always liked the EOTechs. I know that they had some controversy and uh, my issue with the EOTechs is that the two issues is that they were brutally expensive. That's pretty much the biggest one. Yes, they've had some controversy over their uh, stability and holding zero and some quality control issues, but um, I don't even care about that. The fact that they were like $500 to start just made it, you know, unaffordable to me. I just could never justify it over a, a smaller red dot, like even some of the Bushnells that I originally tested, which were pretty good. For, especially for the price point, but Hollow Sun produced a really good one. Now this open reflex is what's really got me excited because this HS510C, this is the instruction manual, kind of the quick start guide. Uh, I'll get off my soapbox about optics. Silica gel, don't eat that creamer. Uh, looks like you get a little microfiber cloth for cleaning everything up, a little foam on top, and then there it is. There's my Hollow Sun, my uh, open reflex style sight. Let's also just take a quick look here. Uh, you have your little pry bar tool and uh, right there to kind of open it up or to slide that battery tray out and you have a little screwdriver there. You have an extra battery tray. Oh, nope, they're uh, like star bits. So here's the key to unscrew your battery tray, which is included. And then you have an extra battery tray with an extra battery. So we are gonna change that and so you will see how that works. The three volt lithium CR 2032H in case you're trying to buy a new battery. But the, the reason I like open reflex is one, um, you don't have a long tube. And so what that does is when you're looking at it, it, you have very little interference with the field of view. You know, that ACOG that with the, the conical shaped tube kind of is trying to do a very similar thing, kind of keep the obstruction to your field of view to a minimum. You know, when you have a tube, you don't really have any choice. Like like this 515C here, you know, it's it's going to get narrower just like a train tunnel. You know, you're you're going to kind of have a bigger obstruction around it because that that far end, if it's 25 millimeters or 30 millimeters, the further back you are, the the smaller that furthest end is going to look. And so it prevents you from kind of having as as little interference as possible. Now, the open reflex light is really just kind of a piece of glass, right? The holographic sight here, it's just this kind of piece of glass. It's like a heads-up display. And so other than the hood around it, you really have nothing uh, interfering. Now, you could actually remove this hood. You could actually kind of almost probably remove the, the, the hood around holding the glass in place and just have it very much like, I don't know, the sight mark ones where you have a very thin frame around it. The problem with that is durability, right? So if you drop it, if something hits it, if you get sunlight behind you, glaring on the glass, you know, there's there's always some sort of balance. But uh, this is kind of the only way uh, to kind of really reduce interference on that sight picture. Very much like the EOTech, you can actually see here, uh, I think this is all aluminum construction effectively, and you have um, the kind of this hood holding in the, the glass piece. Then you have this outer hood, which is really there for uh, impact protection. Now, I thought, this outer hood here, as you can see, it's it's one piece that kind of goes all the way around, 
and then uh, is bolted in the sides. I thought I heard that this was titanium. I may be totally wrong on that. You know, it's it because no, none of it's magnetic. It that wouldn't uh, be a good test. But I I I thought that's what I had originally read. Uh, I kind of find it hard to believe, only because uh, this open reflex sight at this price point is like half of an EOTech. Maybe even less. You know, this is I've seen them go for two fifty to two ninety nine, so under the three hundred dollar mark. And so it just seems to me, man, that it would be tough to have this much quality uh, in a sight or an optic like this that's as desirable as this, and have it be premium materials like titanium and be this price point. But if I'm wrong, correct me. You got the Holosun logo here. Um, you have a uh, quick release. Um, or quick detach lever right here so this tightens it down this button here has a little tiny catch you can see it right there which holds the lever down so when i pull it down there it snaps in place and so to release that lever you have to push that button in which is nice give it a nice secure um, attachment fits picatinny rail you can see here how it cinches that sucker down and then uh, the same uh, bit will with that uh, the battery tray uses uh, to tighten it down, kind of make your macro adjustment, and then this is what kind of cinches it down. So I do love quick releases, you know, in case you have co-witnessed backup iron sights or something like that, and something happens to this optic where it's uh, gets shattered or there's debris on it, you can get rid of it quickly, um, something like that. Typically, if you put it right back in the same T-slot, you, you should hold, you know, it should kind of resume to zero. Um, the other thing that is really unique about these and why I get them in this particular model is you see if you, this one has a solar panel here. Just like the 515C with the solar panel, I found that these are really great not only for being able to power the optic when the battery is completely dead, which it absolutely can, so in light it's going to do that, but it also really works like a sensor to kind of uh, do that adjustment to the brightness level of your reticle, right? So. You know, in brighter light, it's going to be a brighter red. In the dimmer light, it's going to dim down. And so you you have the the optic making some adjustments on your behalf. Now, it's not perfect. And I've said in uh, one of my original Howl Sun reviews is that, you know, particularly at a range, which a lot of us are going to be at, sometimes it's darker right in the stall than it is down range. And so sometimes you have to switch over to manual. I'll show you how to do that. You've got a little bit of some slots here. And that's texturing, I think, just to kind of make, uh, I, my assumption is to to uh, prevent, you know, kind of direct f a reflection into the glass a little bit. And then you have the emitter right in here. So right down there. And then you have the buttons, positive, minus here. So you, you'll make, when you're on manual mode, you can adjust the brightness, seven, oh, seven or ten settings. I, or I think it's ten settings, and maybe it's on seven when you in, you switch. Otherwise... The other mode is auto mode where it's going to automatically adjust. So that's pretty cool. Now, the thing that really sold me about this, and uh, we're going to test it here and actually see if it works, is in the original pictures that I, they had like Allen keys or Allen screws here to make your windage and elevation adjustments. And I was not for that. You know, me personally, I have a fundamental problem of not having an optic be adjustable in the field. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to have like neural turrets to do it by hand. But to me, the idea of having like an Allen key, uh, particularly in the small size out in the field, is not very realistic. Even for me to go to the range, I don't really keep that in my range bag. So there's not going to be, you know, a way to re-zero, you know, even if you go to the range and zero it in and then you go out outdoors or something and you're able to get further out and try to zero at 100 yards and you can't do it because you don't have the right key, I think that's kind of silly. Uh, or if something knocks you off zero or you're moving a, an optic from one rifle to the other or you didn't get it right in the same the right T-slot and you made an adjustment on where you how far it was from your face because of personal preference or something, I feel like it's got to be adjustable in the field. So um, I was not going to get it. But then when I saw what the production version had here is that they look like little tiny flathead screws. And so, yes, you could take this tool, my I presume, you know, right there, and that's what it's for, uh, to make the adjustments here. And let's see, let's hear it. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's clicking. There's a lot of resistance there, so I'm, I, I do like that. It's my understanding that you have a 40 MOA adjustment in either direction. So I, I wanna say that the instructions have said that 
at the factory they do put it on kind of on a jig and do some zeroing with it and then you have maximum of, of another 40 moa adjustment so you know it's going to be in the center there and hopefully it's pretty close so you don't have to make lots of adjustments but um, this is much more likely that i'm going to have a kind of a small flathead screwdriver or this tool or something that's going to work like this. Now, the big key is, you know, these aren't very big. Uh, you know, you can see my finger here. It's not a very big screw head. I wouldn't mind it being bigger. One of the things that I liked about the EOTech Reflex is that you could adjust it with the bottom of a, a bullet case. And so, you know, you had some pretty big, you know, cuts in the, the adjustment screws to do that. And so that to me is plenty field adjustable. As long as you have things that you would have in the field to do it, I, I'm, I'm good with that. So the next thing that I think you should ask is, well, Pete, can you adjust that with the bottom end of a 223 round? Well, let's find out. This is a real round. And I thought we would just go ahead and see uh, if, in fact, I can adjust the screw with the, the base of this bullet. And the answer is, look at that. I absolutely can. Um, that was clockwise. Let's try it counterclockwise. Get out of the way of the handle there. Yep, and I can do it this way too. So now the thing is, I will note is you do have to put some pressure on it because you can see here, it may be easier on this side. When I put that in, you know, it's going to take up the whole thing, but the width of the slot is enough to is is wide enough to accept the rim of the the round there so i can absolutely adjust it this way or this way so i am i'm really thrilled with that you know it's not perfect but what it does do is it gives you options for being able to adjust this in the field and i think that is really really important Talk about uh servicing this thing so right now i have the battery the original battery tray in there i want to take it out so i'll take out the tool here that they provide this little star wrench and loosen these up and both of these tips are the same so you have this piece here and then you there's a little slot on the top of the tray and you can put this in here just like a pry bar and pry it out and it pops out now it is gasketed so it does have like a uh, o-ring kind of wrapped right, right around there so it's typically waterproof when you get it in it will usually hold even without the screws which is nice so now you can see one of the things is it's this one didn't have the battery in it right so it comes with a battery despite the how this battery came in in this tray it actually goes positive side down so just kind of keep that in mind when you slide this little bad boy in kind of the, the widest flat side is gonna go down. And so then we'll push it in here and install it. All right, so now we have the battery installed here and that's going to give us, you know, battery power combined with the solar power. So even in pitch black darkness, we would still be able to use the optic. The one thing I will say is if you see the optic blinking slowly like this, what it's indicating is that the battery is dying right or low power and so what you want to do is get a new battery i don't know how the long these have been sitting on the shelf you know or when they were manufactured so it's not necessarily surprising that the batteries die but if it's a good battery you should get pretty uh significant run time on it um, if you run the circle and the dot the the, the battery should last up to twenty thousand hours and if you run it with just the dot the two moa dot it's going to run for almost 50,000 hours. 65 MOA circle, 2 MOA dot. You can also toggle between uh, the circle and dot, the dot, the circle, and then back to the circle and the dot. So let me show you how to do that. Basically what you're going to do here is uh, you'll use the negative button here to kind of scroll through. So if I hold down the, the, the negative button here for three seconds, it'll go from the circle and the dot to just the dot. That's oh, a clear dot, man. That is a clear freaking dot. Hold it on another three seconds and it'll go just to the circle. And then if you hold it down another three seconds, it'll go back to the circle and the dot, which I like. So the cool thing is you can pick any combination of it. Um, the buttons are a little small. You have to really kind of, 
you know, play with it a little bit to, to get your finger in there to hold it down. But I do like that so that you're not accidentally changing things in, or, you know, um, screwing things up. So I'm really cool with that. Now I'm on manual. You can see here I can change the intensity. And because it's focused here so closely, it's actually a little hard to see the, the uh, red dots. So let me see if I can adjust it. Okay, so I've adjusted that a little bit better to put the focus a little further out so you can kind of see it. Um, if I use the, the adjustment buttons to go down here, you can kind of see it getting fainter and fainter. And so you can absolutely kind of, especially in different light levels, kind of find it to where, you're, where you like. And like I said, when I'm in the range indoors, I usually just manually adjust it. And so if I hold down the power button, I'm in manual mode here, now it's going to auto mode. And because now we are in relatively, well, are under fluorescent lights for the most part, you can see the red dot right in there, but it's adjusting for the light. If I kind of angle my optic over here to a lamp, you know, uh, we should get a little brighter reaction from the red dot as we do. So... You know, if I put more light up to it, it gets brighter, and I move that light away, it gets dimmer. Um, so you do actually have, you know, a pretty nice auto adjustment, which is pretty cool. The other thing is you can actually turn off the optic by hitting both of them at the same time. And so now we have no dot. And so this is good for storage, presumably, you know, you're, or maybe you're moving and uh, you're going to be carrying the gun and you don't need it, you know, the optic on. So you could do that. Either one of these buttons will turn it back on. So any you hit any button and it's gonna come back on again. You can see it there. You can see the red dot dancing. Sorry about the poor focus here. Well, let's go outside and just take a look at what it okay, looks so like. I've got the optic out here and uh, it's a bright day, but the sun is coming down right kind of in my face as it's setting. And I've got the optic turned on here and you can see, you know, as I've got it out here, you know, about where it would be mounted, um, you know, the hood and everything just doesn't interfere with, you know, much of your field of view. So it's super nice. I mean, I'm totally digging that, right? So if we've got, uh, focus out out there on the distance a little bit and then bring the optic up you can see you know really good color preservation and besides the hood around the uh, glass you know it's just not a lot in the and way if you focus on that you can see the dot and the circle pretty clearly because the sun is right there man the sun is right there it's really bright out but you can see here you know if I if I move around here uh, you know, the, the holographic dot moves around and, you know, will stay on zero. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I think it's super crystal clear. Like I said, there's maybe just a little bit of, um, you know, coloration change through, through the glass. Maybe just a little bit of kind of a bluish hue to things, but very, very minimal and much more, uh, less noticeable than it has been in other optics. So... I'm really excited about that. That that circle and the dot is super crisp, and especially when you're focusing on a target, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 yards out, you know, it's just a precise, uh, you know, and really fine uh, image on the glass. So I think it's going to work really well. Here is where you're going to see this kind of um, Revo style orange sunburst color uh, coating on the front end, and you can kind of see it's kind of like a ski goggles or something like that. That's going to help uh, maybe kind of break down light interference, especially when you're looking out towards lights. Uh, but, you know, it's pretty colorful and pretty flashy. You know, no f kill flash or anything on the front here. So keep in mind that, you know, if you're out and about and aiming at something, you know, there might be some reflection. There might be some kind of some bright orange that might catch something's attention. And so here it is on my pistol. I have the camera right about where your cheek would be. So this is where your eye would be looking at it. And so this is kind of it looking down the line of a rifle, typical rifle. And you can see there, uh, super holographic, you know, it's moving around. I'm, it does not appear to be moving off the target at all. I'm actually just holding the gun. Very little, 
you know border around the optic itself so it's just really nice and in fact i think it really looks good on here it has kind of a nice low profile look this is the pistol my pistol that i showed you uh, in black you know nice finish there but you know you just don't have a long tube and especially on something like a pistol where you don't have a lot of real estate you know your your picatinny rail in this case uh you know i have a a piston this is a piston gun so i have the the gas block up here and so i can't really i could i guess mount um, my sight up there and I'm, i might do that uh, but generally it gets so hot i don't like doing that because it makes it not very usable and this has been safety checked, but you're just going to have to take my word for it. I'm not going to uh, prove it to you. But that's what it looks like on the top there. And so I think not only, you know, does it give you a great experience, you know, and it looks great and, and feels looks good. And it doesn't take up a lot of room on, you know, your rifle, your pistol, whatever you might use this on. And, you know, it's really low profile, so it's going to be easier to carry. It's going to be easier to pack away. Um, I just love it. Hollow Sun is really, I think in my mind, doing a fantastic job of bringing unbelievable value to uh, the space, you know, and, you know, bringing the quality and feature set of optics that have been otherwise really at two times the price point of this. Like I said, to have an open reflex sight is, is pretty unique because of how expensive they've been, four, five, six hundred dollars sometimes just to get in the game. But then on top of that, what I really didn't like by most of them is that you couldn't field adjust, adjust the uh, windage and elevation. And so I really hated that and that was a deal breaker for me. So the fact that this has it, in a really beautiful form factor and i've had just great experience with how precise and clear the uh the red dot and the circles have been on this uh it was a no-brainer when i found these to to get a couple and uh, put them on my my toys so hollow sun hs 510c peter von panda out